Hello and welcome to a new episode of Spring Boot 101. Today's topic, database access. In our previous episode, we created a simple Spring REST controller that allowed us to see, filter and create hotel bookings. Now, those bookings were not in a database. We created a in-memory list and we used it as a sort of persistence mechanism. Today, we are going to replace that list and use an actual database. Persistence in Spring is really easy. We just need to annotate our entities and to create a repository interface for them. The repository is the component that will allow us to perform all the CRUD operations, like um, listing all the entities, filtering them, uh, inserting, deleting, modifying them, etc. Without any ado, let's go into the demo. Okay, this is our application as we left it. Okay, so we had a booking controller, it had a list of bookings, and we use this list to display, filter, and create new hotel bookings. If we go to localhost 8080-bookings-o, we get a list of bookings. If we go to affordable uh, 100 then we get all the hotel bookings where the price per night is less than a hundred bucks okay now we need to add persistence to our application the first thing that we need to check is that we have a dependency for a database so in our pom.xml file we have a dependency on hsqldb this is the database that we're going to use initially. In uh, the application properties file, I want to configure it a little bit. In the application properties file, I can instruct Spring. Okay, I can instruct Spring to use the HSQLDB database and to save uh, my hotel bookings in a database called bookings.db. Okay. Now that we have our um, configuration set up, I need to annotate the hotel booking class. We need to add an entity annotation that marks this class as being an entity. And next, I need to add an ID property. It's going to be a long, okay? So I have a long ID. This is the ID property for this class and the ID is generated sequentially. I want my ID to be generated sequentially. So one, two, three, etc. Now I have strategy and I think it's this generation type sequence. And I just need to add another adder for my ID property. Okay, uh, my entity is now done. I don't need to do anything more. And I want to create a repository for it. The repository is going to be an interface, uh, not a class. It's going to be named booking repository. Okay. Uh, don't care. Okay. So it's going to be a repository and it's going to extend GPA, the GPA repository. And we need two type definitions here. I need to add the um, type of the entity that I want to use, in my case, hotel booking, and the type of the ID for the hotel booking entity, in our case, long. Okay. Now that I have my repository, please notice that it is an interface. I do not have to write the implementation for it. In 90% of the cases, just creating an interface, an interface that extends JP repository is more than uh, sufficient. With the repository in place, uh, we just need to initialize our database. So we need to add a couple of hotel bookings inside it. For this, we're going to use a command line runner. And the command line runner is just a class, I'll call it database seeder, is any class that implements the command line runner interface. The command line runner interface has a run method. We can annotate it with compose. Okay, now command line runners are pretty cool. 
after the application starts up, after all the beans are created, and after the application context is created, all the classes that implement command line runner are executed. This makes them perfectly for um, uh, initializing things within our application. And I'm going to use it to create a database seeder. So after my application starts, we'll populate our database with some data, and then we can use the data inside our booking controller. Of course, you, you can create multiple command line runners and you can even give them an order. So if you add the, um, I think it's the ordered, uh, uh, the order annotation, you can have multiple command line runners and you can specify the order in which they should execute. But uh, that's not the scope of, uh, of the today's topic. Okay, we have the, data, we have the database seeder and I want to insert some hotels into the database. I'm going to copy them from here. Database seeder, okay. It's a list of hotel booking bookings. Okay, and I have to use my repository. So we need to add a reference to our repository. Booking repository, okay. We're going to use dependency injection. Database seeder, booking repository. And auto wired. Okay. And in order to save our hotel bookings, we use our repository with the save method. We're going to save our bookings. Okay. We have our seeder, and now we need to modify our booking controller because right now we're using um, some hotel bookings that are defined in an in memory list, and we want to hit the actual database that we just created. Uh, we're going to delete the list because obviously we do not need it. I'm going to add a reference to the booking repository for the controller as well. Okay, and again, we're going to use dependency injection. Uh, no, auto wired. Okay, I'm just making this obvious. Okay, and now I need to modify, uh, we need to modify the methods in our controller. The get all method basically returns all the um, bookings that we have saved. So we have booking repository and we're interested in the find all method. So find all, we go to the database and we retrieve all the hotel bookings that are in there. Okay, that's it for this one. Now, the get affordable method um, basically applied a filter on the price per night uh, field. So we were interested in hotel bookings where the price per night was less than a given value. Now, there is no default method for it, uh, but we can modify our booking repository uh, in order to implement that filter. And the way we do it is by using conventions. So based on the name of we give to our filtering methods, uh, some custom GPQL code is generated behind the scenes. Now, if we go to um, to this page, so docs.spring.io spring data JPA, uh, we have a list of all the filters that we can use, and we actually have some examples of methods. So, um, in their case, they have a method called find by last name and first name. Now, find by is the way a method has to start. Then last name is a property of, I suppose, a person object. And first name, again, is another property. And then based on this convention, uh, some JPQL code is generated behind the scenes. We are interested in the less than operator. Uh, so I want to find all the hotel bookings where the price is less than a certain value. So we lose this convention. In our case, it's going to be, uh, we're going to return a list of hotel bookings, okay? find by, because all, method, all filtering methods need to start with find by. Now we need to add a property uh, where we want to apply our filter. In our case, it's price per night. Next, we need to add the filter itself, which is less than, uh, you remember it from here, less than. And now that's it for the method name. I need to add the 
parameter that we'll uh, use for our filtering. And that's it. Based on this method's name and this parameter in here, some custom GPQL code will be generated for us automatically. That means we do not have to write an implementation for this method. We just need to define it in the booking repository interface. And if we use the conventions right, then the rest will be taken care of for us by the framework, which is pretty, pretty cool. It saves us a lot of time and it saves us uh, from writing boilerplate code. Going back to our booking controller, we can replace this method with return booking repository, find by price per night less than, and we'll pass in the price that we get from the client side. And that's it for the second method. The third method, we need to add something to our database. We need to, we need to get this hotel booking and save it to our database. So we'll say booking repository, save, we pass in the hotel booking object, and that's it. And now we need to return the updated list of hotel bookings. Booking repository, find all, and that's it. At this point in time, we have successfully replaced all the methods of the booking controller um, to use the database. And to make things a little more interesting, let, let's add a method that allows us to delete a hotel booking from our database. We'll call it, um, it's going to return again a list of hotel bookings. Um, we'll call it remove, okay. And we're going to use another path variable, ID. And we're going to create a request mapping with a value of delete and the ID of the object that we want to delete. And the method is going to be get. And now we can say booking repository, delete, and use the provided ID. If we know the ID of a hotel booking that we want to delete, we pass it to this method, and then we add it to the delete method of the repository interface. And we return the updated list of hotel bookings. So again, find all. All these methods, delete, save, find all, we do not have to write their implementation. Um, I know I maybe I repeat myself, but it's very important to know. Uh, most of the functionality, like 90% of it, uh, it's built in. Uh, we do not have to write any more code. Uh, we, do, we don't have to write a lot of code. Even when we need custom filtering, we just need to add the name of the method and things are taken care of for us by the framework. And I find this to be really, really awesome. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll close on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, now let's see if things are working. If I fire up our application, okay, the, 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 um, the seeding process should uh, initialize and then we can go and check out if uh, our application is still functioning. Okay, our application has started and now if we go to localhost 8080 bookings slash all and there it is we have our list of hotel bookings which are now taken from the database let's check the other methods so i have affordable and uh, less than 100 bucks and i get only ibis and let's check the um, remove method as well Let's say you want to remove Marriott from the list. I'll have to write remove and Marriott has an ID of 10. Uh, um, okay, sorry for that. Let's check it out. What, oh, okay, it's called delete, not remove. My bad. So we delete. Okay, and at this point, Marriott is no longer here and we can double check it uh, with all. So we have successfully deleted Marriott from the hotel list. And let's also check the create method, see if it's working. I'll use postman. No 
okay and I'll be adding the um, let's call it Pullman 220 bucks free nights we set in the request and now we have Ibis, Novotel and Pullman so everything seems to be working cool uh, if we look here just as a side note we see that we get all these new uh, files like bookings.db.log etc uh, they, they were created automatically for us when the database was initialized one cool thing though is if you look at bookings.db.log we can actually see all the operations that have been done so we have the free inserts uh, that the cedar did initially uh, then we have the deletion of, um, of one hotel and then we have the creation of the Pulma hotel this is further proof uh, or more um, maybe put it more correctly uh, we can use it as um, a confirmation that our persistence is now a real a real database and you can use the log file to see all the queries that are executed against that in-memory database in our case hsqldb okay uh, now i want to completely swap out hsqldb and replace it with another database h2 i'm doing this just to show you how easy it is to swap a technology with another one in spring i'll delete these temporary files because we don't need them okay i'll go to my pom file i do not need hsqldb so i'll delete it instead i want to use H the h2 database i need a dependency for it so i'll copy paste it from here okay so now my application will use a the h2 database and then in my application properties file i need to replace this with h2 i'll leave the database name the same although i don't have to but just to, to be consistent and at this point if I fire out my application, it should work exactly the same. Let's give it a try. the application has started and let's check it out localhost 8080 bookings oh. cool so we have our free hotel bookings and let's say i want to check out affordable 100 that's still working and delete uh, 11 okay everything is working and I wanted to show you just how easy it is to swap out technologies. Uh, you, you can imagine that you start your project using an in-memory database like uh, H2 or HSQLDB, and then you want to replace it with uh, MySQL, with Postgres, with Oracle or whatever. All you have to do really is to add an appropriate dependency and to make some minor modifications to your application properties file. The rest, you don't care about the rest. The, the repositories remain the same, the entities remain the same. You don't have to modify a single line of, 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 of business logic or a single line of code. You just need to modify the properties and the dependencies. And that's it. That's how easy it is to swap technologies. It, I think it took us one minute and a half. And this, again, I find, I find this to be really, really awesome. Okay, and that's it for, for uh, today's episode. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, have a nice day, uh, write amazing code, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.